Hey there guys, Paul here from the engineeringmindset.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at timer delay relays and timer switches to understand the main types, how they work, and where we use them. Telecontrols have kindly sponsored this video, and they are one of the leading manufacturers in the automation industry since 1963. They offer some of the best timers on the market and guarantee to offer the most capabilities in functionalities and time ranges. Take the time to review their time delay relay portfolio along with suitable relay bases and accessories. You can contact them at sales at telecontrols.com or via LinkedIn. To learn more, simply click the link in the video description down below. Time delay relays are simply control relays with a time delay function built in. They control an event by energizing the secondary circuit after an amount of time or for a given amount of time. Some can even do both. In a standard, normally open control relay, the contacts on the secondary side close immediately when voltage is applied to the coil on the primary side. When the electricity is cut on the primary side, the contacts on the secondary side will open and cut the power to the load. For some applications, we do not want an immediate response on the secondary side. We want this to occur after a certain amount of time or only for a certain duration. For this, we can use a time delay relay. There are two main types of basic timing relays, the delay on type and the delay off type. These can be normally open or normally closed type relays, and we can control the delay time from milliseconds to hours or even days. By the way, we have covered the basics of mechanical relays in detail in our previous video. Do check that out, links can be found in the video description down below. Timing relays are used extensively in industrial applications, HVAC systems, and building services to provide time delay switching. For example, to start a motor, control an electrical load, or simply automate an action. They play a vital role for targeted logic needs. A common example you have probably already seen is in a corridor or a stairwell, which is infrequently used, perhaps in a place of work or in an apartment block. We don't want the light to stay on constantly. We want it to automatically turn off. So once the light switch is pressed, the time delay relay keeps the light on for a certain amount of time, and once this time expires, it will automatically cut the power to the light. Timing relays can be applied to almost any application. These are available as plug-in devices, base-mounted devices, circuit boards, and even DIN rail-mounted controls. Traditionally, timing relays were available only as single-function, single-time-range devices. These devices are still available and are typically used in applications with very simple timing needs. But we can get more advanced timing relays with different functions and multiple timing ranges. Most are capable of controlling voltages or currents over a wide range also, so their application isn't limited. No programming language is required to set them up. We simply adjust the settings via the dials and the manufacturer's guide will instruct you on how to do this. The time delay relays and switches will operate automatically once set up and provided with a trigger or a signal to cause the action. With multifunction relays, we often find an LED built into the device. This will flash at different intervals to indicate what function is currently performing. The manufacturer's guide will tell us what function the LED is indicating. To apply a time delay relay or switch, we need to consider where the device will be installed, what will trigger the device, how long will the delay be before energizing the secondary side, or how long will the secondary side be energized for? Where have you seen timing relays used, or where could you apply one? Let me know your thoughts and ideas in the comment section down below. Sometimes we need the secondary side of a relay to remain on for a given amount of time. For example, an external radiant heater, which we might find at a restaurant with outdoor seating. When a customer is cold, they flip the switch. Now, these use a lot of energy, so we don't want them left on for hours at a time. 
The customer won't be there for too long, so we can use a timing relay. The timing relay will automatically turn the heater off, for example, after maybe 30 minutes. If we look at this simple circuit of a battery and an LED, when the switch is closed, the LED illuminates. When the switch is opened, the LED instantly turns off. So how can we delay the turning off of the LED? We could place a capacitor in parallel with the LED. This way, when the switch is closed, the LED illuminates and the capacitor charges. When the switch is opened, the capacitor discharges and the LED remains illuminated. We can use different size capacitors to change how long the LED remains powered for. We could even use a variable capacitor to allow adjustment of this time period. The switch could be the secondary side of a relay and uses an input signal on the primary side to start the timer on the secondary side. Alternatively, the LED could be on the primary side of a solid state relay. This would therefore use the LED to provide an optical coupling to a phototransistor on the secondary side. The problem we face with this design is that the discharge rate of the capacitor is not linear, so the LED slowly dims until it eventually turns off. So we might want a better design. How can we ensure the LED remains on when the switch is opened, but also ensure it automatically turns off if it becomes too dim? We could add a transistor to the circuit. The transistor will act something like a switch. There are different types of transistors, but we won't go into detail on those in this video. For now, we will consider that the main circuit is connected across two of the transistor's three pins. This type of transistor will normally block the flow of current in a circuit, but when a certain voltage is applied to the base pin, the transistor then allows the current to flow. When the voltage to the base pin is removed, the transistor stops the flow of current in the main circuit. This diagram shows a simple delay timing off circuit using a transistor, capacitor, LED, and switch. The resistors are used to limit the current and protect the components. So we can control the current in the main circuit by sending a signal to the base pin of the transistor. This signal is a small voltage. The transistor will only allow current to flow in the main circuit if the voltage at the base pin is at or above a certain level, typically 0.7 volts. If the voltage at the base pin falls below this minimum level, it will not allow current to flow. With the switch open, the LED does not light up. No voltage is detected at the transistor base pin, so the transistor acts like an open switch and prevents current from flowing in the main circuit. With the switch closed, electricity flows to the base pin of the transistor. The transistor detects the voltage and determines that it is above the minimum level, so it will allow current to flow in the main circuit. As current flows through the main circuit, it illuminates the LED. Meanwhile, the capacitor charges. When the switch is opened, the main power supply to the transistor base pin is disconnected. The capacitor now begins to discharge and provides the voltage to the base pin. This permits the transistor to keep allowing current through the main circuit so the LED remains on. When the voltage level of the capacitor falls below the minimum trigger value of the transistor, it will turn off and stop the current flowing in the main circuit, so the LED turns off. The storage capacity of the capacitor therefore determines how long the circuit is powered for. This simple design is for a time delay switch, but we could again integrate this into a relay. By the way, we have covered how capacitors work in detail in our previous video. Do check that out, links can be found in the video description down below. Sometimes we need the secondary side of a relay to remain off for a given amount of time. For example, when large inductive loads turn on or off, perhaps from a sudden loss of power or the startup of a large induction motor, large voltage spikes or inrush currents can occur due to the strong magnetic flux in the circuit. These surges can damage components and their equipment. If a short delay is provided, then such damage can be avoided. The time delay relay circuits are used for this purpose. If we look at this simple delay time on circuit, 
the transistor is preventing the lamp from turning on. The transistor needs a minimum voltage to open and allow the lamp to turn on. When we close the switch, the transistor receives this voltage and instantly allows current to flow. So how can we delay this? Well, we could simply connect a Zener diode to the base pin of the transistor and then connect a resistor and capacitor in parallel between the diode and the switch. Diodes only allow current to flow in one direction and block the current flowing in the opposite way. However, if a Zener diode is provided a certain reverse voltage, it will open and allow current to flow in the opposite direction. This is known as a breakdown voltage. So, we can use this to control the transistor by only opening when a certain voltage is applied. Now, when we close the switch, the current will slowly charge the capacitor. The Zener diode continues to block the current to the transistor and the lamp remains off. As the capacitor charges, the voltage increases. Eventually, the voltage will exceed the Zener diode's breakdown voltage. At this moment, the diode allows current to flow through it and reach the transistor. The transistor receives this and allows current to flow through it, and so the lamp turns on. When we disconnect the switch, the capacitor continues to supply the voltage, keeping the Zener diode and transistor open. The current flows through the resistor until it drains the capacitor. Once the voltage of the capacitor falls below the breakdown voltage, the Zener diode again blocks the current to the transistor and the lamp turns off. So now, when the circuit is energized, the load will not turn on instantly. It will only turn on once the capacitor is charged to exceed the Zener diode's breakdown voltage. Now, this is a fairly simple design. It's probably more common to find an IC chip inside. Something as simple as a 555 timer is often used instead. But this simple design gives you a visual understanding of how a circuit might work. Okay, that's it for this video, but to continue learning electrical and controls engineering, check out one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, as well as theengineeringmindset.com.